I still remember when I was about nine years old, it was my first time to go inside the Houston Astrodome. It had just opened, and let me tell you, I had been to baseball parks before, but never seen anything quite like that. What a sight. It was just breathtaking. You know, if you went to find the Astrodome today, you would find it just sitting there unused. And if you were able to sneak inside, you would just see it decaying. It was built like it was going to last forever. But here we are just a little over 50 years later, and now it's really nothing. The things we build seem so great at the time, and they really don't last forever, do they? Chapter 13 of Mark is where we spent our time on Sunday, and it began with a discussion where the disciples were really amazed at the beauty of the temple that was around them and they were commenting on that and Jesus reminded them that it was not going to last forever. I hope you'll go back and read the entire 13th chapter of Mark if you've done so already because that was our focus and I'm not going to spend the time on the video to read the whole thing but let me share with you a little bit of the things we talked about on Sunday and then some afterthoughts as well. Jesus talked about the coming destruction of the temple, but he also talked about things they were going to face as the future of the world unfolded. And the things he talked about were really, as we saw, things that all generations wind up, wind up facing. They're really common to, common to all of us. And the things he talked about that were what I call signs of life in between were these things. Leaders who would deceive you, who would try to send you in the wrong direction global strife, wars and rumors of wars, disasters, things like earthquake and famine and world hunger, persecution where people are beaded or arrested for, for their beliefs, and then family strife where a brother turns against brother and families are turned against each other, parents against children and children against parents. These are indeed things that happened in Jesus' time and they happen all around us today. And Jesus was clear, even though he talked about the fact that the end times were in his hands, he was also clear that these were things that any generation had to, had to face. And he gave some specific advice on how we handle things. And, you know, this, these are really pretty simple things, but we easily forget them. We talked about five things that Jesus said. In verse 5 of chapter 13, he says, Keep watch. Be careful that no one fools you. Um, people are going to come and try to get you confused. I thought about that when I was going through the Christian bookstore, finding all these books with sensational titles that actually leave me more confused than helped. Verse 7, don't be alarmed. These things must happen. Alarm is seemingly the way we tend to react. We do get easily alarmed at things and kind of wonder, um, how to make sense of all that, but that's not very helpful. Jesus wants us to be well grounded. He wants us to have a good foundation so that we're not really alarmed. Verse eight, this was interesting. He said, all these things are the beginning. The things that sound to us like signs of the end are actually signs of the beginning of the end, but they are not the end. He calls them the birth pains. Think about that. Birth pains are not pleasant, but they actually lead to something great. Jesus is talking about not a terrible end, but a wonderful end. The unfolding of his kingdom, like we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the positives in just a moment. Verse 11 was another piece of advice. Talking about arrest and persecution, he said, don't worry about what you'll say. God will bring it to your mind through the Holy Spirit. And then verse 13 was the last piece of advice. The one who remains strong will be saved. Another translation says the one who endures to the end. So the advice there is to, to remain strong. And then a verse I really love is verse 33 of chapter 13. This one really kind of sums it all up as you think about and really was a good verse to remember if you were going to go to that Christian bookstore and look at all the books that try to convince you that doomsday is coming. Mark 13, 33, best verse of all, keep watch, stay awake. You do not know when that time will come. There's no kind of secret knowledge or information that's going to save us. We need to be watchful and ready at any given time, regardless of what is going on in our life. That's the advice that Jesus gives us in chapter 13 of Mark. Now, if you were to go around and ask people, are times good or are they terrible? I'm afraid a lot of people would say they're terrible. 
because bad news is what gets all of our attention. And we do know there are a lot of things to worry about, a lot of things to pray for, a lot of those things on Jesus' list that still happen. But let me just remind you, there are some things we can be thankful about in our day and time. Things aren't always as bad as they seem. Let me think about one, global health. Now, naturally, we tend to think about Ebola and all these diseases maybe that are the disease of the day, but we sometimes forget about all the diseases that have been wiped out in the past. Things we used to have to worry about that are no longer on our worry list. God gave us the ability to, to find ways to cope with these terrible illnesses. Think about people, especially in our country, who were disabled. Even in my childhood years, if you were confined to a wheelchair, you were dependent. Now our systems have changed and people even with pretty serious disabilities are accommodated in our society and we make a way for them and they are largely independent rather than entirely dependent. That is a good thing, that is a good change and people of faith help make that happen. This one's kind of tough but think about racial harmony for a minute. Now the headlines all remind us of the strife that takes place between people of different racial groups and that is a very real thing something we should be concerned about and something we should never deny however i don't run into anybody who has any sense who would like to turn the clock back to 1950. oh my goodness i have seen so much change in my own lifetime and many of you have as well too we may have a long way to go but we're not where we were and let me tell you one more that kind of surprised me. I just read about it this past week, and that is global poverty. We know there are a lot of hungry and starving people in the world, but I was amazed to read the actual statistics on global poverty. Would you be shocked to learn that 200 years ago, the level of world poverty, extreme poverty, people in the world who had next to nothing was between 80 and 90%. There were relatively few people who had a life of ease and many who lived lives of squalor. An impartial group, the World Bank, has said that for the first time in human history, despite the increasing population, now less than 10% of the world's population lives in extreme poverty. Isn't that amazing? That's a huge change. Now that doesn't mean we sit back and let these people starve. Global poverty is still a huge issue, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. That's the worst part of the world right now where poverty is indeed um, a really dire circumstance. But praise God that even though we're not where we ought to be, we're not where we were. What a great thing to celebrate. So. Don't let the naysayers keep you always focused on the negative. You should really be neither optimistic nor pessimistic. Remember those words that Jesus had in Mark 13, 33, keep awake because you don't know when the time is going to be. Jesus compared it to somebody who was um, keeping watch all night long and was told they did not know when the master was going to return. It could be in the afternoon, could be evening, could be close to midnight, could be during the middle of the night, or could be early in the morning. And they had to be ready at all times. You know, if they knew exactly when the master was returning, then it'd be easy to be ready. But they didn't know. They had to be ready all the time. As you go to the Christian bookstore, I would suggest don't even buy the book. Don't even buy the book that tells you, here's the secrets you need to know about doomsday. Instead, if you ever get confused about it, just reopen chapter 13 of Mark, read Jesus' words. They keep us rather level-headed. Remember old Chicken Little? The acorn fell on her head and she went around squawking, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. There's a lot of Christian books out there that are going to tell you, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Don't fall for it. As I said on Sunday, the sky is not falling and you don't have to run. Keep calm, keep awake, stay awake, stay on watch, and be ready at all times and remember the words of the Master.